Savvy Business Radio, drawing out the best from our guests with our host, Christina Nitschman. Our guest today is Jeffrey Gittimer, New York Times bestselling author of 13 books on personal development, attitude, and sales, including The Sales Bible, The Little Gold Book of Yes, and today he shares the book he edited and compiled, The Great Masterpiece, and the first writings of Napoleon Hill called Truthful Living. We share some of the greatest lessons in this masterpiece today on our interview, so you'll not want to miss it. Find out more about Jeffrey and go to his website at gitmer.com. Com, that is G-I-T-O-M-E-R dot com and get Truth for Living at all major retailers. Hi, Jeffrey. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you today? I'm fine and yourself. I'm doing fabulous and I'm even better cool. that you're here to share. I don't know Thank if everyone you. knows this, but they've discovered that Napoleon Hill, the one that wrote the magnificent classic Think and Grow Rich, they have discovered that there's another writing from, was it 30 years prior? Truth? Uh, actually, 20, um, 20 years. 1917 mm-hmm. was when Napoleon Hill actually wrote the beginning of Think and Grow Rich. Okay. And, uh, he, after his classes, he was teaching a course in, in sales and advertising. Mm-hmm. And at the end of every class, he wrote an an after the lesson visit with Mr. Hill. And once these papers were discovered, it was, uh, I I was given the honor to edit them. And I thought, oh, my God, um, this is the preamble to Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And so I took literally three years to edit out all of the sales stuff. Mm. leaving in all of the personal development stuff, Mm -hmm. not touching any of Hill's words. I left everything as Mm -hmm. authentic as humanly possible. Yes. And then I um, uh, put together an introduction to each chapter, Uh an ending to each chapter. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, if anything needed annotating, I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, it's the same thing. Did you modernize the words so that it's more modern for today's language, correct? No, I left the words exactly the way they were. But if something needed clarification, I would put in a a paragraph that said, here's what this really means, Ah. or here's how you can use this now. So if you you look at the book, you'll see, like here, there's an introduction to each one of the chapters. Yes. Hold up, book. Mm -hmm. And there's an end, there's an, an ending of how to put this into your life, how to implement this chapter into your life. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that I found in the middle, I would just put get them or note. So Mm -hmm. you, there was no way you could confuse my words with Hill's words. I didn't, I'm not good enough. You know, I don't want to be presumptuous enough to uh, step on the champion of personal development and positive attitude. I'll just, I'm there as a nice editor and nice annotator. And I'm going to make certain that, the reader gets mm-hmm. the flavor of yeah. what things were like a hundred years ago when there was no television or there was no fax machine or there was no literally hardly any phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, the automobile had just gone into mass production. Most of the roads were unpaved in this country. There was no air travel. There was, you know, just mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. what it was. And, and I can, uh, it's easy for me to begin the conversation by saying that one of the, the power words that Napoleon Hill uses is concentration. Mm. The, he wrote a whole book about it called The Magic Key mm-hmm. in 1945. Mm. But concentration was easier in 1917 because there wasn't shit to do. Yeah. You know, n- no one was texting you. No one was, mm. was emailing you. You weren't getting <laughs> notifications about your Facebook buddies. No one was phoning you up on the phone. You weren't like glued to, the, to your iPhone. Mm-hmm. You, you know, it was... Literally, no, and Thursday night at nine o'clock, there was nothing on television because there was no television. And if you wanted to go someplace, you got in your car and drove 20 miles an hour to get there. Mm. So it, it wasn't like it was full of distraction like it is today. And this book is even more germane today mm. than it was back then based on the word concentration. What are you focused on and how are you achieving by having limited or no distractions? 
Wow. And th- this is amazing to me. We, we've had a couple of conversations about reducing stress. And one of the, one of the key things was re- reducing the amount of um, stuff that is a distraction in your life, things pulling you in a million different directions. I think mm-hmm. in modern day life, you know, especially if you're a single mom or a mom or a dad, and you've, you're all oh, got to take the kids to basketball, I got to do this, I got to cook dinner, da, 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 I got to right. email. And then you find that you get three hours of sleep and, and then you're, you're angry at the kids because you're, well, you know, sometimes you get four. Four, sometimes, sometimes. sometimes you get four. Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's interesting? I'm guessing, and, and tell me if you think I'm right, Jeffrey, that it was probably easier to, to do self-reflection and to, you know, self-help and do these exercises 100 years ago and it might be a little tad more difficult today than, say, 100 years ago. Yes, mm-hmm. much more. And uh, Hill also says that you have to, to, to implement self-discipline which means eliminating some things in your life. And all he's saying is eliminate the distractions. Yeah. You know, what are you willing to get rid of to get to your goal? Mm -hmm. Develop an aim, dedicate yourself to doing it, eliminate the distractions, Mm -hmm. and then start to work hard. Yeah, yeah. And there's that effort piece. A lot of the self-help today there's some great books out there. There really are. But one thing yep. I see missing a lot from the, the idea of uh, this kind of creating or manifesting your reality is sometimes they leave out the effort part, which is, you know, attitude is very important. Belief is very important. But you also have to put the effort in there. Well, there's the reason. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are unwilling to do it because they don't want to make the sacrifice. They're, they'll have a craft beer and watch a stupid television show yeah. rather than dedicate one more hour to LinkedIn mm. or dedicate one more hour to making a connection or writing a fabulous email, whatever it is, whatever it is, they're unwilling to do it because there are so many um, lights that moths are flying to and the person who will survive and the person who will thrive is the person who can get rid of some of those distractions. Mm, absolutely. And, and, you you have you have to deprive yourself mm-hmm. of the stupid things in life in order to be able to get to the good ones. Yeah, and most people most people are not. What's very interesting, Jeffrey, is when I talk to most people, if you're stuck in the grind of you know going to a job, a job, sitting in a cube. I think a lot of them, when I talk to them, have forgotten who they even are. I know that was me before I started the show in my own business. I had totally. Someone said to me, "What do you love to do?" I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. I do the grind. I go to work, come home, eat, and do it all over again. I forget who I am. Or you have that two-week or three-week vacation, and you spend half of it drunk. <laughs> or sleeping. So a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people do that. And, yeah. and I don't, the thing I don't understand mm-hmm. is why people are not willing to take the long cut mm. rather than the short cut. And the long cut meaning taking the time and effort to know yourself and to grow, and, yeah. Right, and to and I, I can promise you this: this is a this book preceded um, Think and Grow Rich by twenty years. If you're looking for who you are, mm. this book will give you a stark description mm-hmm. and give you a formula and a game plan that you can link into and join with and start to play with. We're gonna we'll have a Facebook group. We'll have a you know a an online course that will go with it. I'm probably going to do a dozen seminars around the country mm. next year just to talk about truthful living. And it'll attract, you know, three or 400 people in each city that I go to, maybe more, but for sure that. And with, with what's happening right now in the world mm. and everyone seeking that little secret, that little, what can I do to gain that competitive edge? Mm. You have to look at something 100 years old to find the brand new idea. Mm. And it's already course, here. You don't need to invent the wheel. Oh, yeah. 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 Every, listen, uh, um, the great Jim Rohn said, everything you need to succeed already exists. The problem is you're not exposing yourself to it. Exactly. And, and uh, that's the whole deal. And that, this information existed 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and the average person won't take advantage of it. So I'm trying my best to get more people to take advantage of it. And I'm going to make it so easy. Um, you know, my, my publisher is Amazon Publishing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are becoming the preeminent publisher mm-hmm. in the world. Not their, the group where you have to 
preprint the book kind of thing, but mm -hmm. I mean the genuine people that are um, competing with Random House and Simon and Schuster and mm -hmm. Harper Collins, they're freaking big. Wow. And they they're backing it to a point where they believe in the book. Mm -hmm. And that is going to give me a launch pad, the likes of which I've never had in my 25 years of writing. Wow. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for Amazon. I'm grateful for what they're, for, for their deep belief in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, as I explained before we started recording, yeah. um, I just spent the last four days at the Frankfurt, the International Book Fair mm -hmm. at, in Frankfurt, Germany, where Napoleon Hill and uh, the, the, the Napoleon Hill um, Foundation and I shared the booth to try to get truthful living into other languages. And I think we're at about 10 right now. So oh. not bad. To start. No, not bad. Not bad. You we'll got to start at, somewhere. We'll be, at, we'll be at 30 by the end of 2019. That's for right. sure. Yeah, you have to put it out there and then go for it. Go in that direction. Yeah. And, and that's something I found for myself when I started working on my own business and my own self. I did both at the same time. I found mm -hmm. that not only deciding this is the direction I'm going to and having laser focus, but moving every day towards that. And, you know, it's, I think what, and you're right about this, people want the easy fix, the quick fix, that let me get there today. But when they look at the most successful people, they see them right now being successful. And they see, oh, it yeah. happened overnight. Look at you, no overnight success or she. And it really wasn't. It was 25 years of focus, laser focus um, right. on yourself, moving in that direction bit by bit. So now you see the end result and now they, it's exploding. So it looks like it came out of nowhere, but it wasn't. All the huge successes are like that. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is any success. Let me give you the one insight that will help someone achieve their goals a little bit quicker. Not a lot quicker, but a little bit quicker. Instead of adding a period at the end of the sentence, Put a comma and write, even if my ass falls off. <laughs> so I'm going to write the first chapter of my book this week, even if my ass falls off. <laughs> and that puts a greater sense of urgency to it. Yeah. Right. Put that on a post-it note. Put that on your bathroom mirror. Take a look at it twice a day and you're going to be fine. Absolutely. Now, this is a great honor that you were contacted to do this. How did that come about? Because... I I mean, a lot of wonderful writers out there would love the opportunity to work with Napoleon Hill's work. How did that, how did you get that opportunity? Um, I volunteered, uh, I, I met Don Green, who's the, the, the head of the associate, the head of the Institute mm -hmm. about 15 years ago um, through one of my mentors, uh, uh, Charlie Tremendous Jones, who's passed on. Mm -hmm. And we, I explained to Don that, Napoleon Hill gave me my positive attitude in the 70s. I read Think and Grow Rich 10 times. I, it, was just, it was a lifelong thing for me, and, and um, I was very grateful for it. And so I said, I'd really like to give back a little bit if I could. Um, you're not producing a newsletter. Why don't you let me do it? I'll do it as long I, I made him one promise. I said, here's the extraction that I'm taking from you. I never want a dime. And he was like, all right. <laughs> so I've been producing that newsletter for the Napoleon Hill Foundation every week for about 15 years. Whoa. Exactly. Yeah. And so when they found this stuff, they called me. Mm. And they said, hey, we just found the first writings of Napoleon Hill in the archive someplace. Would you like to annotate them and put them into a book? And I go, sure. And so we're, we now have a financial arrangement. But the bottom line is that I didn't have, I didn't ask mm -hmm. him for anything for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, that's and it. That's oh. how those things come about. You give without expectation of receiving. Mm -hmm. And then one day the receipt comes in. Exactly. Exactly. I love that you, you mentioned this because it is such an important um, point to make. Uh, people are like, well, how do I make the bucks right now? How, I, I just started, there's one guy, he started his business and he decided I'm going to edit people's podcasts and he came out of nowhere he'd never even worked with editing system he had just gotten the software the, the week before and he said i'm going to charge this much i'm like but you're not an expert yet you just learned it or got yeah. it you didn't even start doing it yet now I'm, I'm really excited about your enthusiasm that's great but you know shouldn't you take some lessons practice a little bit on your own stuff um and he's like no nah, i'm just going to charge this and it was pretty huge 
I thought pretty a huge dollar and he actually is already out of business um, but see but, you know Jeez, that's a surprise yeah that's that's a shocker but you know here what I find interesting there's no get rich quick scheme I use you know he'd be oh Correct. how do I get in? the only one that you could possibly happen would be the lotto and we've already heard that most people get the lotto end up being broker than before because they end up using it all you cannot win the lotto if you have all of your teeth your teeth all yeah have you, have you ever seen the people that win that thing they're all toothless and they're <laughs> they're not going to quit their job you know <laughs> exactly yeah so yeah. that those those days are pretty much over yeah um people that invest in the lotto should or the the you know the lottery whatever it is that's in your state or in the country um you're not going to win mm -hmm. leave it alone you're go spend a thousand dollars on your own personal development this year and it'll turn into twenty thousand and that will turn into a hundred thousand and that'll turn into a million if you do it right. Yeah. You can be your own millionaire. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I they don't I'm, I'm thinking about writing something mm -hmm. called the, the new MIT. Hmm. Okay. Millionaire in training. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, it's way cool. And, yeah. and uh, um, there are some opportunities there to be able to play with some of the foundational, fundamental things, not the basics, mm -hmm. but the foundational things that you need in order to be able to build your brick by brick wealth mm -hmm. foundation. And if you do that, you're going to win. And if you don't do that, you're going to skip around and try to, you know, this is what I don't understand today. In today's world, Young people have what's known as a side hustle. And side hustles are maybe they're in an MLM and have a job or uh, maybe they're trying to start something on their own. It'll work some of the time. Mm -hmm. You'll make some of the money, but your diversion will be so great. You have to make a goal that says, I'm willing to jump off of my ship onto this other ship and stay with my one thing mm -hmm. until I win at it. Mm. And if they can do that, they're going to be a hell of a lot more successful than if they try to be doing five things at once and watch TV and drinking craft beer. Yeah. Because I think what it is, I want it all. I don't want to give up this. And Everybody I think this, wants it all. Yeah, exactly. Everybody wants it. But also it's a sense of security that's false. They're like, I don't want to give this up, the, the side or the job or the whatever it is. Right. Because then I'm going to be broke. And this happened for me when I left corporate America. I thought, and I, I, not let's not get me wrong, I, I was like less money in my bank account and it was tough sometimes, but I was richer than ever because for one, my health was way better. Uh, I didn't have the hey, stress I had before. I have been responsible for my own paycheck for more than 50 years, five oh years. Wow. I don't always pay myself enough mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's not always... <laughs> You know, there hasn't always been an abundance, mm -hmm. but I'm responsible for it. I don't have anybody else to blame about what happened or what didn't happen or the economy or the, the internet or mm -hmm. it's all bullshit. I'm yeah. responsible for me. Yeah. And I can promise you that when, you, when somebody looks at this, mm -hmm. you'll get a whole new understanding of who's responsible for what. Chapter one is success is up to you. Mm hmm and if you go to hillsfirstwritings.com, you can put it in your show notes, anybody can have the first chapter of the book just mm -hmm. to see what it's like themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that'll put you into our funnel. You might get a couple of other offers, but the bottom line is you'll get the first chapter for nothing. Or you can just go to Amazon and, and pre-order the book, which comes out October the 30th. I don't know when the show will air, but... Next month. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So and yeah. it'll already be out, but they, we have a lot of pre-orders. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are wanting to have the book for themselves. And, and, they, and they, how, how much uh, is your, your time and your growth worth? I mean, if you go and buy a couple Starbucks for coffees for 20 bucks, yeah. you know, you can prime it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, go, go, on. go on. Yeah. Don't, People don't read enough. People don't understand. And the book will be available in, in Kindle. I've recorded it um, aud in audio, so mm -hmm. you can get it on Audible or Brilliance. Uh, um, you'll be able to get a hardbound copy. I think you should get all three, because most people will get a book and then you know, get on the plane. They don't want to carry the book, so they have the Kindle. 
Um, and you have to listen to it. It's like a podcast on, on steroids. Uh, and it, it's, it's amazing to me how many people listen to podcasts now. Yeah, absolutely. They do. You, you, mm -hmm. How's your listenership? Do you have an active listenership? Oh, you bet your sweet bottom. Yes, we have 3.5 million. Yeah. And yeah. those are people who are taking an active interest in you and your thoughts and the people that you bring on to share their thoughts. Absolutely. Correct? Yes, absolutely. And um, even when you, I mean, my podcast is relatively simple. We're at only 100,000 downloads a month. Mm -hmm. But when I say only, it's probably 100,000 more than most of the people that want a podcast. Mm -hmm. It's taken us, it's only taken us a year to get to 100,000. It's great. So we're, our plan is to be at 250 by the end of 19 mm -hmm. and half a million by 2020. Piece of cake. So that's, Thank yeah, I, it's not going to be that difficult to do because we have, you're going to be one of our guests, so you'll see. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're, you'll be our first, uh, well, normally we do redheads, but you're going to be our first pinkhead. <laughs> yeah. Um, Go ahead. I want to make sure that your audience receives the, the maximum amount of value for this process, not simply a bunch of, hey, go buy my book. I'll be your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, this, is, this is what I love, Jeffrey. What, what I, there's so much out there and there's no excuse for you not getting this valuable information into your life. I mean, correct. one of my friends, two of my friends, actually, one does it on the way to the train. And while she works out, she's listening to self-help and, and stuff to motivate her. And then my other friend who drives two hours is listening in the car. You can make your car your self-help library. Exactly. It and most people happen. don't. I, I referred to it as a university when I was first getting into personal development. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to listen to a cassette or yeah. then you listen to a CD. And now you can, you know, you're, the, the world will be online in another year. They'll have internet everywhere. You know, mm -hmm. you'll just, maybe you'll have a chip in your arm or something. Um, <laughs> you know, the, you're born. <laughs> and, huh? We'll have more distractions. Yeah, we'll be able to, yeah. <laughs> It shows up on your glasses. It'll be like those Google glasses, you know, where, oh where <laughs> you know, we'll see. But I want to read you something. And before I do, mm -hmm. um, I apologize, but if I don't wear my glasses, you don't get a good read. Is that no cool? No worries. <laughs> That's fine. I know you, I'm, I'm getting that way myself. I've blown up the screen here, so the lettering is really big. That's what's cool. great about the computer. So I can, it's like, yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I don't need glasses. I only use them for reading. Ah. Um, but there's a, there's a chapter in the book here called the five, well, the sign of a dollar, called the five point rule. Okay. And I want to share this information because it will give you some insight that people weren't thinking about. Nothing in this book is brand. No one's going to go, oh my gosh, enthusiasm. Nothing's new, but I'm going to give you the nuance of why it's so powerful. Mm. Here we go. Success may be had by those who are willing to pay the price. And most of those who crave a $10,000 a year position, that was 100 years ago, it's now about $250,000, especially if they are engaged in business, may realize it if they will pay the price. And the price is eternal vigilance in the development of self-confidence, enthusiasm, working with the chief aim, performing more service than you are paid for, and concentration. Mm. With these qualities well-developed, you'll be sure to succeed. Let's name these qualities the five-point rule. Mm -hmm. Now, let me explain the nuance of this. Okay. No one's going to go, oh my gosh, did he say self-confidence? <laughs> no, here's the deal. It's the combination of these things. Mm -hmm. You can't do four out of five. You can't not perform more service than you're, than you can't not concentrate. And concentration is the key because what he's saying is focus in on the other four things and you'll win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a hundred more valuable lessons just like that in this book. A hundred. Yeah. And 
the aha factor, if you're, you know, when your audience is listening to you, they're looking for something that will help their life. <laughs> this is not a life changer. This is a life enhancer. Mm -hmm. Big difference. I'm not, I don't want to make a brag about, oh my gosh, if you get this, your world is going to be so much easier. You'll have a million dollars sitting in your driveway. Uh, just open up your Cadillac and count the money. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's work your ass off. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the Cadillac will appear. Mm -hmm. It's not going to appear if you just think about it. <laughs> okay. But, but my, my question to your audience is, what are you willing to do to get what you want? Mm. That's the real question. And if you say whatever it takes, that's a bullshit answer. Mm. What you have to say is, what you have to do is be specific about what you're willing to do. Make a game plan for what you're willing to do. Write down something that you feel you're going to succeed at and then go for it with all your might. Yeah. I'm going to give you one more secret. Mm. If you don't love it, don't start it. Oh, absolutely. So true. You love what you do. Oh my God, you're I love it. With the microphone. Yeah, exactly. You're hugging your microphone. You, you, <laughs> you have, and you obviously have an expression, a self-expression. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you know, you'd have red hair or, uh, you know, blonde hair or whatever. But you've decided that you're going to make a statement and that your statement will set you apart from all others who are seeking to either duplicate or replicate what it is that you're doing. And... Um, I don't know whether your language is explicit or not uh, on your show, but usually not. <laughs> huh? Usually not, but yeah, it's okay. What the hell with them? Yeah. You know, if they don't get it, let them go their own way. Totally. And, I'm totally cool with and, that. <laughs> right. They either understand what you're trying to do to help mm -hmm. or they're going to grumble. Yeah. You can't be a winner if you're a whiner. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. th that's what they have to do. They, they, your, your audience or whoever is listening mm -hmm. and looking for that one, that, that one morsel, that one thing that they can take to the bank, mm. just go to your bathroom mirror and take a look. Yeah. Now <laughs> what I have done in my bathroom mirror is I post goals. Mm -hmm. I don't have them in a book. So I just have three or four words on a post-it note. I stick it on my bathroom mirror. Mm -hmm. I have about 10 of them up there right now of mm -hmm. the things that I'm going to be doing. One of them is launch truthful living. And I have another book coming out, which we'll do another interview for called the sales manifesto in January. And it's the, it's the definitive sales book. I'm tired of people telling me how to have my best year ever. I want to have my best decade ever. <laughs> and the, and the only way to have a best decade ever is to, is to make your style decadable, not annual. I love it. You know, your yeah. boss wants you to be annual. Mm. You know, we're going to have a great year this year. We're going to do everyone, want everybody to be on a team. Salespeople don't want to be on a team. Mm -mm. They want they the guy next to them to die so they can have his leads. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> I if love Bob dies, If Bob dies, can I have his book of business? I'll take his leads. No, they're my leads. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's the challenge that, that people have right now. And what are they willing to do specifically Mm. to be able to achieve their goals. So by putting my goals in my bathroom mirror, I'm reminding myself every day what I have to do to get to the next level. Jeffrey, now, I, I, I so love this. There was a guy we had on several years ago who wanted to do um, a Guinness Book of World Records flying-wise, and he had a goal. Now, he didn't even have a pilot license yet, and he had mm -hmm. huge health issues. The doctor was like, I don't think you'll ever be able to fly. He did it. Uh, and from the moment he made the decision, and that's a key point there, making the decision on your goal that bam, because it starts, oh, you kind of willy nilly, I'm going to climb a mountain. Yeah, it'll be nice someday. But no, he's like, I'm going to do this. And one year today, I'm going to be a pilot. He did. Another year from then, he was out there, you know, working towards the Guinness Book of World Records. He did it. Eight months later, he was in the Guinness Book of World Records. And I said, how did you do that? And he said to me, everyone comes to me and said, oh, what you did was so impossible. You're super special. He's like, no, I'm not. The only thing that makes me different, the only thing that makes me different than everyone else is I didn't give up because there were so many times during my trip towards that goal that I could have just quit. It was not fun. It was not comfortable, but I did not give up. I purchased a book a few months ago that was put out by Guinness in the 30s or 40s. Mm -hmm. 
And it was the preamble, the precursor to the Guinness Book of Records. It was just the wild things of the world where mm-hmm. they put down all these like cool, fun facts and amazing, amazing things. Mm-hmm. They were all Guinness records, but they didn't realize it until they went by the, by virtue of the fact that they changed their name mm-hmm. from cool shit to <laughs> world record. <laughs> yeah. They built an empire. Mm. Think of how subtle that nuance was. Yeah. And think of how subtle it was when all of the things that we're looking at right now have evolved to. Like people used to think the fax machine was like the greatest invention since the beginning of time. <laughs> when in fact, they are now paperweights. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, like, where's the, my fax machine? No one gets a fax anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. But for a decade, it was our main method of communication. Now we have PDF. Mm-hmm. What will replace PDF? And the answer is no one knows but something. Yeah. I'll guarantee you something. And the guy who's in his basement right now figuring out what the next, you know, PDF, QDF, RDF. Hologram, ZDF. transporter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. It's going to be Star Trek. There's no doubt about it. Because if you go back and mm-hmm. you read Dick Tracy from the 1940s where he had his two-way wrist radio, that is yeah. now the Apple Watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's unbelievable. And, and my, my partner, Jennifer, mm-hmm. she can start her machine, her, her laptop from her Apple watch. She doesn't have to enter any. That's amazing. Yeah. It's a little scary. It's a little, a little scary. scary. Well, a little but scary. Yeah. 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 But totally fun. So I'm looking at life right now is as a series of foundational developments. Mm-hmm. And if you want to master the foundations, then you have to dig in personally and dedicate or rededicate the time in order to be able to do it. And most people will not dedicate the time. Yeah, that's so amazing. you're out there, um, yeah. say that again? That's amazing to me that most people will not take advantage of these wonderful opportunities in the age where it's everywhere. You, don't, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, maybe you couldn't afford the book, but now... And com- combine yeah. that with the fact that regardless of your, your political beliefs, we're in a boom economy. Mm. And if the people that aren't taking advantage of it, like if your sales are up... 10 or 15%, you may erroneously think you had something to do with it. Mm-hmm, yeah. No, you had nothing to do with it. If your sales are up 40 or 50%, it's because you're taking advantage of the economy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to double next year. Yeah. But I, 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 now I've known people, though, that in any economy, any business, they're like Revlon during the Depression were doing awesome. And most businesses yeah. were not. So I think when you get that sweet spot where you have what people need and value and want and, and desire, it doesn't matter the economy, the market, you're, you're going to have sales. I agree. But, yeah. the, but the assertive sales team right now, not the aggressive, mm-hmm. the assertive sales team right now is going to win. And if they're value providers, if they are helpers rather than salespeople, if they are servers, they're going to win. Mm-hmm. and yeah. what people have to do is have that foundational education mm-hmm. in order to be able to understand who they are as a person, not who they are as a member of a team. Mm. Who, you, yes. who you are when you wake up in the morning, what your attitude is when you talk to your kids or take a shower, you know. So I, I'm, let me share one more truth with your people. Mm-hmm. So listen up. For 25 years when I wake up in the morning, mm-hmm. I've been doing five things none of which have anything to do with beer, TV, or pills. I wake up in the morning and I read, I write, I prepare. That causes me to think and create. Read, write, prepare, think, create. Now, I've been doing that for 25 years, every day even if my ass falls off. <laughs> and people say, well, I, I got to get the kids ready. I have a nine-year-old daughter. I'm with her every other week. I walk her to school every single day, no matter what. So I don't want to hear people telling me. Um, uh, I can't. I don't have time. Yeah, whatever the excuses yeah, are. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's total bullshit. Yeah. Um, so I want to make certain that um, 
anybody can find the time if they want. Just get up an hour earlier. That's all you have to do. So, but I've been doing that a half an hour a day, an hour a day for 25 years. My product is I have 15 books that I've written that I actually have written. Wow. Other people think they're going to write a book, but they let other distractions get in their way to stop them. And whatever it is they want to do, if they want to start a limousine company or they want to be an Uber driver or whatever they want to be, they can do it if they decide they want to do it. They dedicate the time to it and they wake up earlier than everybody else. I make money while other people are sleeping. Love it. Yes. Yes, and that can be you too, everyone, <laughs> if you put the effort exactly. and the time. Yes. Well, Jeffrey, so, I, I, we do have to close up here. So, sure. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for the time. Oh, Jeffrey, it's been so awesome. You've shared such valuable information with our savvy audience. Everyone, please go get Truthful Living, the first writings of Napoleon Hill, a very important book. It will begin to, if you put the effort in there, begin to rediscover yourself. One of the top things I hear from people who are still stuck in the grind is, I don't even know what I like, what I want, what I, this will, this will give you that. That will give you the recipe to start moving in that direction. Jeffrey, I just have to thank you again for coming to Savvy Business Radio and sharing this brilliant information. My pleasure. And that's <laughs> final. <laughs> thank you so I much, Jeffrey. I appreciate your time. Okay, cheers. Thank you. Savvy Business Radio broadcasts worldwide via a large podcast network celebrating business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and successful individuals. Find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest. Call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.